Hi everyone, it's Bethany and in this tutorial we are going to be making a really pretty tote bag with a monogram and patterned HTV. I'm really excited if you guys have been following along. I did a really fun unboxing of a lot of beautiful patterned vinyl and if you did miss it, I will link it up here so that you can go see because it is so breathtaking. I'm really excited, but I wanted to be sure to go ahead and do a tutorial right away about how I'm going to use this patterned vinyl because it's just so pretty. So we're going to do the pattern HTV today. Um, and I'm really excited because I'm going to make a cute little tote bag with a monogram and I couldn't help but use this nice, really pink, um, blush color. It's really nice. This one is the spring plaid pink and it's going to look really pretty against this white, I think. And then I thought, well, we might as well use the Explorer 2 because look how cute they go together. They match so perfectly. So we're going to use the Explorer 2 to do this beautiful little tote bag. So I will give you some basic basic materials and tools we're going to use today, but be sure you use the description box below because I will be adding a couple more materials um, throughout the video that might sneak their way onto the craft table. So of course we're going to be using our patterned HTV. We're also going to need a weeding tool and then a tote bag and I'll link where I got mine. I got mine in a three pack from Michaels I believe and I love the little size of it. Um, and then we're going to use our heat press mat. And then I'm also going to use my 9x9 Easy Press. So I decided I'm going to use my medium size. If you guys saw, I did get the largest 12x10. And um, the reason I'm going to use my medium is because of the seams on this tote bag. So you want to avoid seams and so even though my design is going to be fairly big, um, I don't want to use my biggest one and, and um, you know, risk getting an uneven press with the seams. So I'm going to go ahead and use my 9x9 nine nine, even if I need to move it around just a tad. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I think that is it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop into design space and we are going to double check. Um, let me find my my measuring tape around here. Okay, I got it. It was with my maker. So I need to double check how much space I have to work with real quick. So I'm going to have 13 inches by just about 13 inches. So let's use those measurements as we hop into design space and we are going to put together a monogram. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we're gonna cut it out on this really pretty pattern HTV and get it on this tote bag. And I'm really excited because this one is all for me. So I'm usually making stuff for the kids or for friends and I'm making this for myself. So I'm really excited about it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to change my machine from the Joy to the Cricut Explorer, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to come over to the Shapes box, and I'm going to replicate that 13 by 13 inch square for my tote bag, because that's just going to help me when sizing my monogram. So we're right about here. You can even come up here and just type in 13 to the width, and it will automatically apply it to the height. And then I'm going to just size this down just a little bit. Okay, so let's make this white. And then we're going to work on our monogram. So how we'll do that is we're going to go to the text box. And we are going to come up here and type in, I think it's monogramos. And I believe this is from defont.com. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one. And I'm going to type my monogram out. So my monogram is B D. R. Okay, so this is how it turns out right here. And what I'm going to do is quite, it doesn't quite look like my monogram yet, so I need to edit this set because when you type in B, it gives you the left, middle, and right. The D will give you all three, and then the R will give you all three. And so now we just need to put all three or separate all three and then put them back together in the right order. So how we will do that is we are going to get a, let's see, do, can I, oh, we won't let me contour that. Okay, so we are going to take our shape box, grab a few of these. So we are gonna duplicate this a couple times. Okay, so I believe we're gonna need four. So I'm just gonna kind of stack them over here for a minute. 
So when you are slicing, what you're going to do is you are going to, let's go ahead and ungroup these so that they are standing alone. Okay, so when you are slicing, what you're doing is you are covering the section that you want to take away. So I am going to go ahead and cover this section right here because I want to keep the little B on the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that. I am going to highlight both of them and I'm going to come over here and click slice. Then what I can do is I can, after it has been sliced, I can delete the box, delete one layer, and delete two layers. Okay, so now I'm left with my little B on the right side. So I can go ahead and repeat this with the left. Now you can only slice two layers at a time, so you cannot, you know, put both um, on each side and do them all together. So you'll have to do them separately. Okay, so then I again will highlight, slice and then delete, and then I can do the same to the other side. Unlocking this helps me just manipulate the length and height to where I want them, and just keep repeating. So once you kind of get in the habit of how it works, it goes really quickly. So I'm just gonna drag over my leftover pieces, and then of course this is gonna go on that left side, hiding what I don't want, selecting both, clicking slice and deleting. So again, this is from defont.com. I am doing this for personal use. I believe it is a free download, so you guys can um, grab that if you would like. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight all three. I'm going to go over to align, and I'm gonna say distribute horizontally. Perfect, and I'm actually going to try and get those a little closer. And then I'll do it again. Okay. And then I'll say distribute horizontally. And then I will say align center vertically. Okay, so that is helping make sure everything is lined up perfectly. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and select all three. I can come down here and click weld. So now they are one image. They will cut just like this. They're perfectly aligned and they will all three cut in the same order, in the same alignment when we go to cut. So now once you've made your monogram, be sure to save it because you can go ahead and resize it as many times as you want. You can come back into this project and add different canvases. Um, I did do a monogram coffee mug and I will link it in the top right up here. Um, so then I could you know, come back in and size it down and do another mug. So just make sure that once you make your monogram, you've done all the hard work and now you can make a million different projects for it. You just need to resize it accordingly. So let me go ahead and just make this pink. That way we can kind of visually see what it's gonna look like. And then I'm gonna come up here and see how big I want this on my tote. I'm kind of thinking, that looks pretty good. So it's about 8.8 .8 by 8.9. Might size it down just, well, no, that looked really nice. Okay, so I'm thinking this looks really good. I'm gonna be on the safe side though and do about seven and a half. Whenever in doubt, go a little bit smaller. Okay, just because once you kind of get your contents in your bag, all the sides kind of fluff out and I want to be able to have a nice um, visual of that monogram, whether it's full or not. Okay, so I'm going to go with seven and a half. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to come over here to the layers panel and I'm going to click this little eye and I am going to hide my cut of the square because I don't need my Cricut machine cutting out a square. That was just for sizing purposes and visual purposes. So now I can click make it. And what I'm going to do is I am going to get my settings all ready, but first I'm going to click mirror because we are using iron on. So I'm going to go ahead and click mirror and then we will click continue. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my um, dial setting to vinyl plus see or iron on plus I sorry um, I did check the website where I got my vinyl my HTV so it did recommend doing iron on plus for this material so now I can go ahead and load my material onto the mat and we will get to cutting 
Okay, so for reference, this is where I'm looking for my um, temperature settings and my cut settings. So I'm on express, expressionsvinyl.com because that is where I have purchased this pattern vinyl. You just click machine settings and it comes up with a page like this. So it has your Cricut settings, silhouette settings, your HTV um, heat settings chart where we can find out our temperature and settings and then a vinyl sizing and application chart. So I'm going to go ahead and click this first one. And I am going to be using the Explorer. So it has the heat transfer cut settings for the Explorer. If you scroll down, it also has the settings for the um, vinyl for the Explorer, just a regular adhesive. If you scroll a little further, it has the Maker HTV cut settings. And a little bit further is the Maker adhesive vinyl cut settings. So I'm going to scroll slowly right back up here to the iron on it. So I misspoke. I must have been looking at something different. So again, for patterned, it's going to be just regular iron on. So I went ahead and switched my dial. So regular iron on and then for the setting. And then what I'll do is I will come back over here and I will um, decrease that. And then I will come to the HTV settings and then we can figure out how warm our easy press needs to be set to. So I'm going to come down here to patterned and it says we're going to do 105 for 10 to 15 seconds. It's it's a hot or cold peel and we're going to use medium pressure. So always, always check your website where you purchased your HTV or your adhesive vinyl because not all HTV and vinyl is created equal. They have their different cut settings. They have their different heat settings. So you want to make sure that you are checking individually those settings um, on each manufacturer's website. All right, let's get cutting. Okay, so I unrolled this. Isn't this beautiful? I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see how this works. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and open up my machine. Does anyone else get really excited when they open up their machines? It's just the slow motion of it coming um, open. It's just so pretty. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to set my bag aside real quick. And I'm going to grab my blue mat and I'm going to go ahead and get this all loaded. So we are going to place our material mater uh, pattern side down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that down right on the mat here. Okay. Perfect, and then I'm going to use my brayer tool just to make sure it's all nice and down. Okay, so here's a tool that I'm going to sneak into the video, so be sure you check the description box below if you need any more information on anything that makes a little debut for the craft today. So I'm just going to make sure that this is all down and nice and flat. And again, I did change my iron-on setting to just regular iron-on on my dial. So um, I must have been looking at something else, but please forgive me. It is 5.52 in the morning, and I am crafting with uh, some sleepy eyes before coffee. So <laughs> I made a little error, but I went ahead and fixed it. So we're just on regular iron-on. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, press my little flashing arrow button because it needs to be loaded. So that's going to load my mat. Okay, and then once this little cricket button flashes just like that, we can click it and it will start cutting. Okay, now while that's cutting, I can grab my Easy Press and I can go ahead and get the settings all set. So what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and turn it on. And I am going to set the temperature to 305. And then I'm going to set the timer down to 15 seconds. So once my selections have been made, I'm going to double check my first one, okay, yep. Once my selections have been made, 305 for 15 seconds, I can go ahead and let that heat up and it will give a cute little chime once it's all ready to go. Okay, so now it's already done cutting. It looks great. I'm going to go ahead and unload. And then what I will do is I am going to go ahead and flip my mat over and peel my material from the mat. Just kind of placing a firm hand on that and bending the mat instead of my, um, my iron on. Okay, so now I will go ahead and grab some scissors so that I can cut off my extra iron on. Better yet, I'm gonna use my paper trimmer just so that I have a nice clean 
finished cut. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm so excited to see how this turns out. I have fallen in love with this beautiful patterned oops, um, pink plaid and I just have been wondering what to do with it and then I remembered I had some extra tote bags and I thought this will be really fun. Plus I love monograms. My husband even mentioned it the other night. He said um, something about the girls wanting me to, oh they want me to do their bicycle helmet. Um, and so I was like, oh yes, I can put your monogram on it. And he was laughing because he was saying, you just love the monograms, don't you? And I am so guilty of that. I just love monograms on everything. Okay. So there are our extras and I love the nice clean pieces, especially on a pattern that is so, um, you know, has such right angles and, um, good lines on it. It's really helpful to keep it really organized and straight. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and place our trimmer away. And then our, I love the little chime. It's so cute. Um, it's all ready to go. So it's signaling us that it's heated to its proper settings. So let me go ahead and shut this little guy. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my um, little uh, weeding tool here. And you can use whatever weeding tool that you like. And I'm going to just pierce a corner and start peeling. Okay. Okay, so once I have done my outer edge, um, weeding essentially is just taking away anything that you do not want, and I keep track of my little pieces here. These are really big pieces, so you can just gather them in your hand. Um, so now I'm just gonna go through and weed out the middles comes off really nice. That iron-on, um, basic iron-on setting for this was perfect. Okay, that's coming off so nice. And one last little piece. Okay, so I want to make sure that my workspace stays very clean so I made sure to throw away all of my scrap pieces of iron-on because if you have any scrap pieces get on your tote bag or your shirt whatever your material is that you're ironing on you will um, accidentally iron on your scraps and it won't look very great so make sure everything stays clean okay so you guys ready to see what it looks like I'm ready to okay I'm gonna turn it around and there is the final look that is so cute Okay, I'm going to have to order more of that. I think I'm going to have to log on and get a bunch more. This is beautiful. And also remember on um, Expressions Vinyl, if for, most of their prints are, um, I just have to mention, most of their prints that come in the patterned HTV, some of them are available in the patterned um, adhesive vinyl. So if you wanted to, you know, make a make some kind of project that you didn't want HTV for, but you like the pattern, double check in the other um, material to see if you can get it in just regular um, adhesive vinyl. This is so pretty. Okay, so now I'm just gonna set this to the side. I am kind of drooling over it. It looks beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna grab my mat and I'm gonna grab my tote bag. And then what we're gonna do first is we are going to, you see this little piece down here that's kind of folded. We are gonna fold that all the way down. That way we don't get any um, creases underneath our material. So we wanna make sure everything stays really flat. And we are gonna run our press over this. We are gonna do that to first and foremost, and the most important thing for me is to remove all of the wrinkles because it drives me a little bonkers. Let me get more of my cord here. Okay, so it drives me bonkers to have um, wrinkled material. So we're going to do that. But also, the one important thing about this step is you are removing any moisture that may have been locked inside of that material. So it's, this is a very important step. If you are new to the Easy Press, I will link my unboxing that I did for the largest one, and you can what they come um, what they come like right out of the box you can see what the first project looks like and you can kind of just get to know a little bit more about the press so you kind of do this for about five seconds or however long it takes to get your material looking nice okay and then I am going to grab a lint roller really quick 
because I have a little puppy and even though he has not been around my tote bags, his little fur tends to get everywhere. Okay, so there we go. It's all perfect. Okay, so now what we can do is let's grab our measuring tape and keep that handy. And we're gonna grab our design. Oh my gosh, this looks so awesome. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm just going to eyeball that to get myself started here. Straighten it as much as I can. Okay. Now I'm going to take my measuring tape and get it a little organized here. I'm going to just measure the edges and make sure I am centered. So I'm going to go with this side and I am at two and three quarters. This side is two and three, ooh, just a little, just a tad off. Okay, let me double check there. Okay. Oh, now it's too much, okay. Well, your eye is good to the quarter of an inch, I think, so I'm just gonna move it there and keep it. Okay, so, looks great to me. And then I'm going to go two and a half, and that is, oh, pretty much two and a half. So we are going to stay right there. So that looks beautiful. I'm just going to double check that I have it. I think I need to move it just a little bit like that. Okay. I would center mine on these handles, but you know what? I don't think these handles are quite three inches and four inches. The handles are not quite center. I wonder if they are on the other side. It might be worth taking a look. Let's look on the other side. I don't think so. Okay. How silly is that? And I have it down just, just perfectly. Maybe that's a little bit better on that side. Three and a half and three and a half. Okay, well, maybe we'll do this side. This one's a little, this side's a little bit better. So let me preheat that. How silly. Well, there you go. There's a little tip that you might not have known about. Make sure that you double check your handles. Maybe one side is a little bit better than the other. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that that all looks good. And still making sure that these bottom pieces, you know, go ahead and flip down. now I have it where I'd like it so now I can go ahead and take my press again we are going to do 305 for 15 seconds and then we are going to do a hot or cold peel so I'm going to go ahead and lay it down right over looks like it will fit perfectly the first time I will click the Cricut button and it says medium pressure so I'm going to put a tad bit of muscle in there and excited to see how it turns out okay so I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up and then I am going to actually flip mine and just press it again it doesn't say anything about that but I'm gonna try and just do a little bit on the back so let's do that maybe for about five seconds or ten seconds okay All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to let this cool a little bit. So sometimes it's helpful to remove your mat. Another thing I did not do is I usually remove this um, nice mat from underneath because I don't like it getting too hot, but it looks like it did just fine. Oh, it got a little bit of bubbly, but it'll um, it evens itself out. But if you have anything underneath, um, go ahead and take it out and just use a bare surface because sometimes even with a mat, this can get a little warm underneath here. So sometimes my um, surface will start, or this uh, mat will bubble up a little bit, but it always goes back down, but I don't like letting it do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that cool just a little bit. Okay, so this said hot or cold peel, and this is almost cool, it's more warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a corner, and I am going to go ahead and just peel at an angle. And I'm going to watch really carefully all of my little sections and make sure nothing is coming up. 
And if you do notice that you have any part of your design that is not laying down or is peeling up as you are peeling your carrier sheet away, then make sure that you just keep this top sheet Mine did perfectly, but um, make sure you keep this sheet. You can lay it right back down and then you can go ahead and repress if you would like. So make sure you keep this until you are completely satisfied that everything is down and you're happy with it. But mine looks really good. That looks so nice. I'm so happy with it. Okay, so here's the final tote. I'm really happy with it. The directions were so easy on their website to um, get it laid down perfectly um, with those heat settings and the cut settings were perfect. So I'm really, really happy with this project. So let me know what you guys think of this project. Let me know if you guys have looked at any of their other patterns. I will go ahead in the description box and I will link this pattern in case you want to get it yourself. I will also link the um, heat guide that they have on their website um, or that little heat section and um, I will link their cutting section. Remember it's all in the same place you just have to click the little drop downs um, that way you guys can easily find it but I think this turned out really pretty and I'm really happy with it so if you found this helpful and you think this looks just as pretty as I do make sure you give me a thumbs up in the um, tutorial and then be sure to leave me a comment tell me how you're doing what are you working on um, let me know what you thought of the craft and I hope to see you guys in the next video if you are new here and have not subscribed be sure to subscribe. We are going to be doing so many fun things coming up on the channel and I cannot wait to show you guys what is coming next. All right, everyone have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.